from the burden you bear. All do you know, my Jesus? Do you know, my friend? Have you heard? Good afternoon. We're going to start today's service with a hymn of praise, one of the favorites, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Crown Him with Many Crowns, the Lamb upon His throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns All music but its own 
Awake my soul and sing Of him who died for thee And hail him as thy matchless king Through all eternity Crown him the Lord of life Who triumphed o'er the grave who with a strife for those he came to save. His glories now we sing, who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives that death may die. Crown him the Lord of heaven, one with the Father known, one with the Spirit through him given from yonder glorious throne. To thee be endless praise, for thou for us hast died. Be thou, O Lord, through endless days, adored and magnified. Well, on behalf of the Ekstrom family, I want to welcome you all here. Thank you for being here. The fact that we had to haul in three extra rows of chairs is a testament to uh, how many people uh, loved Darlene, and it's her life that we are here to reflect on, to remember, and uh, in it, all of it to honor the Lord. Um, so um, if you would pray with me as we open. <sighs> Heavenly Father, we, uh, we come to you now and we thank you that you are a God who is always near to us. Um, you are near when we are singing your praises. You are near to us when we need to be comforted. And you are near to us now as we, as we gather. I thank you for the gift of community. I thank you for the fact that we have a, a fellowship, that we can join together and we can remember Darlene, um, your, your precious child. And uh, we know that you are the one who um, comforts the brokenhearted. Um, you are the one who has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. So we commit this time to you, these next few moments um, as we share and as we reflect, God, I pray um, that you will um, be very, very near and present to each one as we remember Darlene and honor you. So we love you, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Um, we're going to do something unique here. On the back of your program, I hope all of you guys got one, um, is Darlene's formal obituary. But because we believe that you can all read... I'm not just going to read it to you. We're going to respect your intelligence, and we're going to let you read it. But what the family has done is they've given me some, some little bullet points. So what we're going to do is I'm going to let you read through her obituary, and while you're reading, I'm going to kind of just give some little bullet points, and hopefully they'll like sync up. And, and if not, if I'm going too slow, slow down. Uh, if I'm going too fast, hurry up. So you start reading now, and then I'm going to read the, the commentary that the family members have kind of put together. So the first thing they wanted you to know is uh, what her parents may have lacked in material possessions. Uh, they more than made up for with the love that they shared with their family and their friends. The second thing they wanted to know was that she was good looking. So you might wonder, I mean, who could have possibly added that commentary note? That was Donald. He thought she was cute. Uh, Darlene taught child evangelism classes for many years. Donald was in the electronics lab at the Navy parachute unit. However, he did not make any official jumps. The Quonset that they had had a swamp cooler in the heat of the desert. Um, a swamp cooler or the heat of the desert? <laughs> yeah, uh, I've heard of swamp coolers are kind of like an old school way to keep you cool. No, no AC, but that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, Emmanuel Baptist is in the Highland School area and it's still open. 
Lacombe is a small area within the church, a school, and a grocery store near Lebanon. Um, it was a very nice place for them to live. The Lord helped Donald and Darlene buy a house in Kailua, which started their investments. Hawaii was a challenge for the family that came with many blessings and its own troubles. Daniel, David, and Darla graduated with highest honors from Kailua High School. You may have noticed as you came in uh, that there are a few, this is a very small percentage of the many quilts that Darlene made. Um, so those quilts are on display, including a blanket that was made for Kira Ro Rose, who was born on January 7th, 2024. So that would have been the very last thing that Darlene was able um, to make for one of her precious family members. Darlene always had a huge smile on her face when she saw pictures of Kira Rose. She loved her family and she was loved by them. And lastly, we've got a double great. We've got a great, great granddaughter uh, coming this year. Um, so she had a, a full quiver and um, they are very, very excited about the, uh, the, the, the love and the, the breadth <laughs> of the Ekstrom family. Um, so um, as we continue on, we are now um, going to have another song, Thanks to God for My Redeemer, that Steve is going to um, lead us in. I think this is one of Darlene's uh, favorites, right? This is one of her, or something that you like at least. All right. <laughs> If it's all right with you, I'll do this one by myself. <laughs> thanks to God for my Redeemer. Thanks for all thou dost provide. Thanks for time, now but a memory. Thanks for Jesus by my side. Thanks for pleasant, balmy spring times. Thanks for dark and dreary fall. Thanks for tears, but not forgotten. Thanks for peace within my soul. Thanks for prayers that thou hast answered. Thanks for what thou dost deny. Thanks for storms that I have weathered. Thanks for all thou dost supply. Thanks for pain and thanks for pleasure. Thanks for comfort in despair. Thanks for grace that none can measure. Thanks for love beyond compare. Thanks for roses by the wayside. Thanks for thorns their stems contain. Thanks for home and thanks for fireside. Thanks for hope that sweet refrain. Thanks for joy and thanks for sorrow. Thanks for heavenly peace with thee. Thanks for hope in the tomorrow. Thanks for all eternity. Steve, that was a good choice, Donald. Our uh, scripture reading for today, I'm going to make a few comments on this passage. It's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. It says this, Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we were in this tent, 
We groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly Father, with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose. And he has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. I don't know about you, but I like stories that have pictures. I like word pictures. They help me see sometimes difficult or challenging principles. Paul uses a word picture. He uses a metaphor about tents. When I think of tents, I think of camping. I think of this process that people go through where they leave their comfortable home and their comfortable bed and they go out into the elements and they sleep on the ground. They maybe go up into the mountains. They find a beautiful lake. Some people like going to the beach. They set up a tent. They roll out a sleeping bag and they sleep outside. It's an interesting phenomenon. Typically over time, those rolled up sleeping bags don't go on the ground anymore, right? They go on a cot and then they go on a double-decker inflatable mattress and then you wind up in a beautiful trailer, right? <laughs> Camping is something that, that people do and, and we call it roughing it. That's what I think of today in 2024 living in Salem, Oregon when I read this passage. But I want to suggest to you that the original audience thought of a different camping experience. I think they probably reflected back on that 40-year period where they camped and they wandered in the wilderness. And they may have had their own system of some sort of swamp coolers, but man, that must have been a challenging period of time. Think about how many times they had to set up and tear down camp. Typically, we go camping on a three-day weekend, right? It's this temporary time, this, this temporary dwelling. And if we really want to rough it, maybe we go for a week. The Israelites camped for 40 years in the heat of the desert, setting up and tearing down camp as God led them. And you know what kept them going? What kept them going was the hope of the promised land. They were told that if you follow me and if you trust me, I will lead you into this beautiful place, this land that is flowing with milk and honey that kept the Israelites moving from that temporary dwelling in tents to this permanent land that they were promised. You know what? Even God had his own tent, didn't he? God had his own tent during those 40 years. They called it the tent of meeting. And that was the place that Moses and Aaron would, would sit and they would, they would speak to God on behalf of the people and God would speak to Moses and Aaron on his behalf to communicate to the people. Even God had his own tent. But that was temporary too, wasn't it? There was something much better waiting for God. It was Solomon's temple and the beauty and the grandeur that was associated with it. And then it was also a foreshadowing of the heavenly kingdom where God dwells. Tents are temporary dwellings, temporary vessels that are here for a short time and they are foreshadowings. They are pictures of something better that's waiting for us in the future. Physical tents are temporary vessels that precede a heavenly home because tents wear out. Zippers break. Tent poles either get lost or they get bent. Wear and tear causes holes to appear in the fabric. I've been living in my tent for 52 years. 
And even though I busted out my nice suit, this tent is showing signs of wearing. If you look close, got some gray hair. One of the ways I know that this tent is wearing out is when I was 17 years old, I never made a sound when I got up out of a chair. <laughs> never. I never threw my, my legs over the bed and got up to face the day and groaned. Can any of you relate? Verse 2 says, Meanwhile, we groan. We groan while we are in these physical, temporary tents as a sign that we are aware of the fact that they are going to have an expiration date. These bodies have an expiration date. And in this body, we will groan. Uh, my wife, Tammy, uh, went to go visit Darlene when she was in the hospital. And, and Darlene wasn't having a good day that day. She knew that her tent was wearing out. And as hard as Tammy tried to, to kind of get a, a smile or maybe even a raised eyebrow, you know what Tammy got that day? Groaning. Darlene didn't feel well. Um, her, her earthly tent was wearing out, and she may have been just kind of wanting to get into that heavenly dwelling place. Tents don't last forever. We can do our best to replace hips. We can replace heart valves. We can get LASIK eye surgery. We can go to the doctor for our 50,000 mile checkup. But we know that our bodies are temporary. They have an expiration date. These bodies are temporary. So death really shouldn't surprise us right? And it doesn't. We know that death is inevitable, but there is still obviously sadness. There is grief and there is pain associated with losing a loved one. Even though we know it's coming, that doesn't always just remove the grief and the sadness that's associated with saying goodbye to a friend, a mother, or a wife. And that's a good thing that we feel sadness, right? Because there's a direct correlation to the amount of love expressed and love felt compared to the grief that's felt when we have to say goodbye to a loved one. But I want to direct your attention to verse 5. It's such an interesting verse in the middle of this passage. It says that God has made us for this very purpose. God has made us knowing that there is a day that the temporal tent will wear out so that he can then usher us into that better place, that promised land that he so desperately wants to lead us to and have a reunion with us. He has prepared us for this very thing so that we can rejoice knowing that our loved one, and in this case, that Darlene, is no longer in that temporary tent. I was surprised when I read the, the uh, obituary that Darlene was 91. 91. That's pretty good. 91 years in that tent. I was surprised because when I saw Darlene, her hair was always nicely um, arranged, styled. Not, that's a more appropriate word. It was always nicely styled. Her mind was sharp. She always had something important to say. Darlene and I were metformin buddies. We both were on metformin and we would talk about our symptoms and our A1C count and we always had engaging, fun conversations. We didn't know Darlene by just the name Darlene in our home. She was known as Grandma Darlene. She watched our kids, she played with them, she loved them. Um, so we are absolutely going to miss her. She has moved, she has made a transition from her temporary earthly tent into her heavenly dwelling. Darlene had an incredible impact on so many people, and she also made an impact on the kingdom of God. But in our sadness, my friends, we have hope. Why do we have hope? Because she was sealed. When she made a decision to follow Christ, the scripture tells us that she was given the Holy Spirit as a pledge or as a promise that that heavenly dwelling place was hers. The Holy Spirit took up residence in her house 
And on the day that Darlene passed away, God cashed in on his pledge. He cashed in on that promise. When he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, he never left Darlene. The the psalmist in Psalm 23 says that that Darlene took an incredible journey. She, She took a journey that none of us have gone on. Darlene went from life to death to life. And the psalmist in Psalm 23 says that even though Darlene walked through the valley of the shadow of death, she had absolutely no fear. She was comforted by her guide. Jesus guided her. He never left her nor forsake her. And he comforted her with his rod and her staff. My friends, we know that death is not the end. Death is the beginning the beginning of that eternal life, that promised land experience that Darlene's no longer poking her finger and testing her blood sugars. Oh yeah, she may still be singing, that's for sure. She had a beautiful voice and she's joining the the heavenly host. She's still singing, but she's not groaning anymore. She's not taking her metformin pills anymore. She has left her earthly tent behind and she is now basking in the glow of her heavenly dwelling place. Darlene was committed as she worked with child evangelism. She wanted to share the gospel with kids. She loved kids and she wanted to make sure they knew that Jesus was real. They, she wanted to make sure that those little kids had the Holy Spirit of promise. That's and I know that she would want me to not forget to mention verse 10. Because verse 10 is the gospel. Verse 10 says that we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Darlene had to face the judgment seat. And when she did, she had an advocate with her. She had an advocate that stood before the father and said, she's with me. Darlene didn't live a perfect life but she was redeemed. She was a child of God. And we know that to be absent from the body, as Darlene is, she is now present with the Lord. And my friends, I would hope that each one of you knows for sure that when you stand before the judgment seat and you have to give account for the way you lived your life, it is my hope and it is my prayer, and I know it is Darlene's as well, that you would leave today knowing absolutely that you will be not only reunited with Darlene in heaven, but that you will be reunited with your creator in heaven who he has created a place for you so that when this earthly tent wears out, that you will know for sure that you will stand in glory like Darlene is today. My friends, our earthly tents are going to expire, but we can take hope. We can take courage knowing that if the Holy Spirit lives in you and you have been sealed, you have a heavenly dwelling waiting for you. That promised land experience that heartens us, even on a day like today, when we are here uh, to remember a friend who has passed from this life into the next. So take hope. And if you don't know for sure that you are going um, to be in heaven when you pass away, I'm going to be here for a while. I'd love to visit with you. So we are so glad you're here, and I would like to close in a word of prayer. Lord God, I thank you for the the clarity of your word. I thank you for um, your promise, that promise to never leave us nor forsake us. From that very day, we put our faith in you. You take up residence, and you, you help us get through difficult times. Um, you, you lead us along the paths of righteousness. And all the way up until that very point that our earthly tent wears out, you then usher us into that eternal dwelling with you. So we look forward to and we anticipate our heavenly eternal home. We thank you for the, the, the memories that we have of Darlene. God, and we know that she is with you today, that she is in glory and you have glorified and perfected her body. And that gives us hope and we take courage today because we know that while Darlene is absent from her body, she is now present with you. Amen.
And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know he lives. God sent his son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. And then one day, I'll cross the river, I'll fight life's final war with pain. As then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth a living just because he lives. Lord, life is worth living uh, when we live in alignment with you and with your will. God, thank you for the hope of tomorrow in the midst of a world that things are ever changing and there's always just this element of the, of the unknown that swirls around us. God, may we daily find hope in the promise that is set before us that you have prepared a place for us and there will be a day that we will be reunited with you through faith. Amen.